Well, hello, boys and girls. It's Mr. Holden, and it's time for today's Monday Library Lesson and Bedtime Story. And this week, as we've been putting our story together, this is the final week in that unit. Boy, has it been a lot of fun seeing the stories you've been coming up with. We're talking about story sequencing, which is putting the things that happen in the story in the right order. There's three big parts of a story we're going to talk about in a second, but just think about it this way. I don't know if you've had a chance to make a pizza since we've been home uh, with the quarantine and everything, but we made one last night. And I know for a fact, as somebody who was used to when he was a kid work in a pizza place, there's an order to making things. So look at how we have it set up now. Put on the sauce, make the crust, let it cool, eat it, cook the pizza, and sprinkle on the cheese. If you do that... I have a feeling your pizza won't turn out because things aren't in the right order. So let's take a look. What do you think it comes first? If you chose make the crust, you are absolutely correct. So we're just going to move that on over. See if I can grab both of these. I've had a little problem with Wixie today. There we go. And by the way, if you want to ever grab a text box and a picture, this is what you do. You hold down the mouse. Wait, if I could do it correctly. Hold down the mouse. Don't let go until you've covered both. And then ta-da! You grab them both at the same time. So next, after we make the crust, what comes on next? Do we eat it? Do we cook the pizza? Do we put on the sauce? If you chose put on the sauce, great. Do not, I repeat, do not eat the pizza right after you make the crust because first of all, the dough is raw. It's not good for you. You're going to get sick to your stomach. Uh, and don't cook it because, well, I mean, you could have pizza crust, but it's not going to be very good. So we're going to put on the sauce. So now it says make the crust, put on the sauce, let it cool, wait a minute, eat it, cook the pizza, then sprinkle on the cheese. Something is not right. Something's terribly wrong. So which part do you think really comes next? I don't think it's let it cool. So is it eat it, cook the pizza, sprinkle on the cheese? If you chose sprinkle on the cheese, you are absolutely correct. So I'm going to hold down my mouse and grab both of these again. Watch. And then I'm going to hold down my mouse and grab both of these. And now we've got crust, we've got sauce, we've got cheese. Yes, Mr. Holden knows you could put on toppings, but let's pretend this is this is our cheese pizza. For like my daughter who only eats cheese pizza. I like just about everything on a pizza, by the way. So what happens next? Do we eat it? Do we cook it? Do we let it cool? Well, probably a bad idea to, to eat it since you haven't, you know, it hasn't done any baking yet. So if you chose cook the pizza, you are absolutely correct. That comes next. Of course, you got to cook it, right? And it isn't hot, so you don't let it cool. So let's say you cook the pizza. What comes next? Let it cool or eat it? Now, I told somebody in our Google Meet today that we had, they raised their hand for eat it. I'm like, boy, you're one of those people that can't wait till the pizza gets out of the oven. But let's be honest. It's good for the roof of your mouth, which could burn if you you eat your pizza too early to let it cool. So I'm going to put that next. That is the next step. Makes perfect sense, right? And then you eat it. So let's see if it makes sense. Make the crust, put on the sauce, sprinkle on the cheese, cook the pizza, let it cool, and eat it. So the, the, it helps to make, the, make things make sense when you put them in the right order. But did you know there's three big parts of a story, the beginning, middle, and end? In the beginning, we meet the characters and we learn about the setting. So let's say we're making up a story. I have my dog with a surfboard. He's the person or animal in the story. And the setting is obviously the ocean during the daytime with a sailboat. Now, the beginning, we got we to gotta meet the characters, right? But in the middle, that's where we find out about all the little and big problems. You feel tension. It's a little uneasy. And in this case, here are the problems. We have a shark and a storm. So maybe when he's out surfing, he gets attacked by a shark. Or he sees a shark, and then a storm hits. So the big problem, it doesn't get solved in the middle. That's for the end. That's what the end is for. And that's where all the problems of the story are solved. You might be asking yourself, Mr. Holden, why is there an airplane there? Excuse me. Because the dog with the surfboard is going to take the airplane out of the water, and it's going to take him to safety. The end. I think I'll call my story Dog with a Surfboard. Now let's take a look, because we're going to share a story today that we shared a while ago as a bedtime story, but I want you to help me put things in the right order. And last week we shared part of Corduroy when we were talking about character traits. Uh, but we're going to take a look at the story Corduroy, and we're going to try and fit all these parts in the right order. So let's take a look. 
we've got the guard found corduroy. Corduroy knocked over the lamp. His button was fixed. A little girl bought corduroy. Corduroy rode up the escalator. Hmm, doesn't look like it makes a lot of sense, does it? Well, that's because the parts of the story are not in order. So let's share the first part of Corduroy right now. And at the end of the story, we'll take a look and see if we can put all of those events. So think about them. Go back to the video as we're sharing it if you need to. This is a great story by Don Freeman called Corduroy. And we're going to put it in order. He did the story and the pictures, by the way. Corduroy is a bear who once lived in the toy department of a big store. Day after day, he waited with all the other animals and dolls for somebody to come along and to take him home. The store was always filled with shoppers buying all sorts of things, but nobody ever seemed to want a small bear in green overalls. <clears throat> then one morning, a little girl stopped, and she looked straight into Corduroy's bright eyes. <gasps> oh, Mommy, she said, look! That's the very bear I've always wanted. Not today, dear, her mother sighed. I've spent too much money already. Besides, he doesn't look new. Look, he's lost the button to one of his shoulder straps. Corduroy watched them sadly as they walked away. <gasps> I didn't know I'd lost a button, he said to himself. Tonight, I will go and see if I can find it. Late that evening, when all the shoppers had gone and all the doors were shut and locked, Corduroy climbed carefully down from his shelf and he began searching on the floor everywhere for his lost button. Suddenly, he felt the floor moving under him. Quite by accident, he had stepped onto an escalator and up he went. <gasps> Could this be a mountain? He wondered. I think I've always wanted to climb a mountain. He stepped off the escalator as it reached the next floor, and there before his eyes was the most amazing sight. Tables, chairs, and lamps, and sofa, and rows and rows of beds. <gasps> this must be a palace, Corduroy gasped. I guess I've always wanted to live in a palace. He wandered around and admired the furniture. <gasps> this must be a bed, he said. I think I've always wanted to sleep in a bed. And up he crawled onto a large, thick mattress. All at once, he saw something small and round. <gasps> Why, here's my button, he cried. And he tried to pick it up, but like all the other buttons on the mattress, it was tied down tight. He yanked and he pulled and he pulled and he yanked with both paws until pop! Off came the button and off the mattress, Corduroy toppled. Bang! Right into a tall floor lamp and over it fell with a crash. Corduroy didn't know it, but there was someone else awake in the store. The night watchman was doing his rounds on the floor above. When he heard the crash, he came dashing down the escalator. Now, I want you to watch part two of our Monday Library Lesson and Bedtime Story to find out what happens next in our story, Corduroy. Tune in to part two of the video coming up next.